The essential feature of the creation of consciousness is the union of opposites in the vessel of the ego. This image of the ego as a vessel leads to the important idea of being a carrier of consciousness, that is, an incarnation of transpersonal meaning. Two main archetypal figures have represented this idea in world culture, namely Buddha and Christ. What Christ and Buddha have in common is the idea of being a carrier of consciousness. Characteristically, the image emerging in the West represents the standpoint of the ego, and that deriving from the East speaks from the standpoint of the self. Together they reveal a pair of opposites. The crucified Christ and the meditating Buddha represent consciousness as agony and consciousness as tranquil bliss. Total acceptance of the bondage to matter on the one hand and total transcendence of the world on the other. United, they picture the two sides of the carrier of consciousness. The idea of the individual as a vessel for consciousness brings to mind the symbolism of the Holy Grail. As the container for Christ's blood, the Grail carries the divine essence extracted from Christ by his ultimate experience of the opposites, the conjunctio of crucifixion. Just as the Holy Spirit is to be reincarnated in empirical man, so the blood of Christ is to find a containing vessel in the psyche of the individual, thereby creating for itself a Holy Grail. On the basis of our emerging knowledge of the unconscious, the traditional image of God has been enlarged. Traditionally, God has been pictured as all-powerful and all-knowing. Divine order was seen as guiding all things according to the mysterious but benevolent divine purpose. But no one questioned how much of divine awareness does this divine being have. The new myth enlarges the God image by introducing explicitly the additional feature of the unconsciousness of God. His omnipotence, omniscience, and divine purpose are not always known to him. He needs man's capacity to know him in order to know himself. In a sense, this indicates the revival of the Old Testament gods who were less differentiated, unlike the New Testament God where Christianity separated the opposites of good and evil into eternal antagonist, Christ and Satan. In other words, Christ and Satan are now beginning to be reunited consciously in the vessel of the modern psyche. The new myth postulates that the created universe and its most exquisite flower, that is man, make up a vast enterprise for the creation of consciousness that each individual is a unique experiment in that process and that the sum total of consciousness created by each individual in his lifetime is deposited as a permanent addition in the collective treasury of the archetypal psyche. Certain mythical images seem to suggest that accomplishments in the personal, earthly life are transferred to the divine or archetypal realm. For instance, in early Egyptian religion, the dead were thought to be turned into stars or companions of the sun. A pyramid text describes the translation of the dead king to the heavenly realms in these words. The king ascends to the sky among the gods dwelling in the sky. He gives his arm on the stairway to the sky. He who knows his place comes, says the gods. O pure one, assume thy throne in the ship of Re and sail thou the sky. Sail thou with the imperishable stars, sail thou with the unwearied stars. Similar imagery occurs in Christian symbolism in which the righteous after resurrection will ascend to heaven. Thus Paul writes, I will tell you something that has been secret, that we are not all going to die, but we shall all be changed. This will be instantaneous, in the twinkling of an eye. When the last trumpet sounds, it will sound and the dead will be raised, imperishable, and we shall be changed as well, because our present perishable nature must put on immortality. Understood psychologically? These texts refer to a transfer or translation from the temporal, personal life of the ego to the eternal, archetypal realm. 
presumably the essential accomplishments of egohood, its total of accumulated consciousness, is deposited by means of a final sublimatio in the collective archetypal treasury of humanity. This new myth postulates that no authentic consciousness achieved by the individual is lost. Each increment augments the collective treasury. This will be the modern, more modest version of the idea of having an immortal soul.